I'm in upstate New York and I'm about to cross into Canada with my RV. Now I've never done this before, but I think I understand the requirements. So I'm gonna take you guys with me and show you what it's like going in through one custom station and then next week going out through another. Happy Sunday, bird watchers! It's Robin with Creativity RV. I am very excited today. I have driven 64 hours to get here, according to my dashboard, and I'm about to cross over into Canada and see my best friend that I have not seen in person in about eight years. She has a little house on a lake up near Toronto, and so I'm going to go up there and meet her and spend the week, and I cannot be more excited. But it is a little nerve wracking to cross into Canada when you have an RV because it's not the same as just showing your passport. So I looked up all of the rules and I think I have everything I need. I have my passport, I have my proof of insurance for both my Jeep and my Airstream, and the registration for both my Jeep and my Airstream. I have the exact address that I'm going to, a story for why I'm going there, and have checked the list of everything else that you can have or can't have and so I think I'm gonna be good to go, but let's go check it out. I stayed the night last night at a harvest house, so I'm only about 45 minutes away from the border, and um, let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, it all goes okay. Okay, just got autos and RVs, I'm gonna try it. Hi, Hello. how are you? Not too bad, you. Wonderful. Good. Where's home for you? Uh, Denver. What's bringing you up here today? I'm visiting my best friend in Yarker. How do you guys know each other? Oh my God, we've known each other for 25 years. A week. And then, you have like a campground that you're heading to? Uh, no, I'm going to stay in her driveway, driveway in Yarker, and then I'm headed out through Detroit. Uh, do you have surprises from anything that might be left here at all? No. Author stop will come out? No. Uh, so you're locked here in 2015, you went through that with Sure. So yeah, it's been a while. To Victoria, I think. No. Thanks so much. Enjoy. Have a great day. Well, that was easy. He didn't want my registration or my insurance, even though on the website it said he might want that. So that was so easy peas. Okay. Off to see my best friend, Beth. I made it to Canada, got through customs just fine. I'm now in the driveway of my friend Beth's house who lives on a lake and we've had the best couple of days. It was so good to see her. I haven't seen her in a long time and we've been best friends forever. So when I got here, we immediately just started hanging out on her fabulous deck on the lake grilled some food, and then in the morning I turned her on to her first morning fire. So we've been doing that every day, and it's been so much fun. So now it's early in the morning on I think my third day here, and I'm just about to head over for another morning fire. And I'll tell you, it's really funny when you go and visit somebody's house with your house. Um, it's a completely different feeling, and I think my friend has had a hard time wrapping her head around the fact that I have everything that I need in here. And if we're missing like a spice for dinner, I can run into my house to get it. It's different from any other guests that she's ever had. And um, I've definitely taken advantage of a couple of things she's had in her house, like the Wi-Fi in Canada, because my Wi-Fi doesn't work here. And she has a fabulous hot shower that I haven't been enjoying every day with unlimited hot water. But the one thing that I have not taken advantage of, which she could not really wrap her head around, was that I didn't want to stay in her guest bedroom. I wanted to come back to my own little pod back here and sleep in my house, in my own bed, really thanks to my mattress from Brooklyn Bedding's RV mattress. Now, you guys may have seen before that I put this fabulous mattress into my Airstream. I don't think I would have stayed in here. I probably would have stayed in her guest bedroom if I didn't have this wonderful mattress. But after my long drive into Canada at that first night, I couldn't wait to get back in here and snuggle up on this comfortable bed. I'll show you guys some of the unboxing of the bed and how it just puffed up into this wonderful curved space in my Airstream. It has made a huge difference in the comfort of my sleep. And I'll tell you guys, if you are looking for an RV mattress, check them out. I mean, for me, this is the one. It's comfortable. They have a 120 night sleep 
guarantee. The bed is designed in Arizona. They ship it to you for free. And they have a bunch of different types of mattresses and sizes to choose from. Before I run back out to the fire, let me say thank you to Brooklyn Bedding RV Mattress for sponsoring this video and also for giving our viewers 25% off. So if you guys want one of these mattresses and they are rad, just go to www.rvmattress/creativityrv and use the code creativityrv to get your 25% off. Okay, I'm going to run back and enjoy the rest of my time with my friend and then take you guys back over the border into the states and show you how that goes. Lake. I've had a wonderful few days in the country with my friend Beth, but now we're headed to downtown Toronto. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do and hit that little bell to get notified of new videos because coming up soon, I'm going to be showing you how I found camping in downtown Toronto so that we could attend a party and I could stay there overnight and then do something that I've been meaning to do for 10 years. And I'm going to take you guys with me. But first, to finish up this video, I'm going to show you guys my exit out of Canada Hasn't happened yet, fingers crossed it all goes okay. Here it is. Okay, I'm about to go through customs. I just went over the Ambassador Bridge, going into Detroit, and I'm gonna take you guys with me. Um, I'm not sure which lane I should be in. Hopefully it will become clear. Let's see. This looks okay. Not sure. Let's see what happens. I don't know where to go, babe. Is this wrong? Hi. Thank you. Okay. So it goes like this and then to the... Okay. Have a good day. All right. I hope so too. Luckily I'm small. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Have a good day. All right. Tricky. Steering maneuver. That was interesting. Thank you. It was way more difficult to go into the United States than it was to go into Canada. And now it looks like I'm going through some kind of a toll. I'm not sure what this is. I'm not sure how much this is. Hi. I had no idea there was a toll. Thank you, ma'am. How's your day going? Pretty good. Good. Thank you, ma'am. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, so the toll would have been $7 for a car, $14 for me. And I'm just about to hit downtown Detroit. And I'm going this early because I don't want to deal with the traffic. So that was really interesting. First of all, there were no signs that said, oh, I'm in the wrong lane. There were no signs that said, um, there were no signs that said RV lane at all. And I told her that I had trouble seeing it and she said, maybe it's not on. So I was in the wrong lane, first of all, to get to the right place. And then she made me stop. She checked me. She checked both of my license plates. Um, with my passport and had me open up my camper and then check the inside of my refrigerator and made me throw out an avocado. Um, if I had had raw meat, she would have made me throw that out too. So interesting, right? All right. I'm going to see where I'm going now because I don't know. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next week with an all new video. Until then, everybody out there have happy travels and be free.